So, so let's start right there. I mean, there, like you said, there, there's just no real, it's 100% substitute for having the kids in school and learning in person. Absolutely. I'm so glad you started off that way because I was going to do the same thing. I, one of the things, the positive things that will come out of this is I think people will really start to have an appreciation for our frontline teachers because there is no substitute for learning in a classroom setting, having that, that, that instruction available by a professional. And that I think people are really going to um, have even a better appreciation for than maybe they've had in the past. And there is no substitute for that. You know, you, you hear about online learning, on, online learning and a lot of other um, kinds of instruction that's given, but um, I just think there's nothing like the interaction that you have with a, a, with a professional, a, a teacher in a classroom setting. There's a lot of individual attention that can be giving, given they have a sense of when a kid is falling behind, you know, they, they see it right away, they know their kids, uh, absolutely no substitute for it. And we're looking at, like you said, really the last nine weeks. I mean, it might not be a total loss, hopefully well, that some school districts can get yes. some materials out to some kids to still get some of the basic info and some of the, the bigger points, the bigger takeaways, but. That's the thing that keeps me up at night. When I think about uh, the, the, really when you think about it, there's 11 weeks of instruction that, that is very different from what it was originally planned to be. And so that has to have some implication at the end of the day on the level of instruction and learning that our kids are getting. Uh, un, not anything close to what it was like had it been uh, with, with teachers. And here's what I'm worried about. We have roughly 800 kids that we even know about who have no access to internet in this county. So they, they really can't do any online earning, learning. Uh, the, many of those families don't even have a computer. They may have a cell phone. We even have some locations where there's no <laughs> cell service. So right there, there's a group of, of um, people who are underserved in, in the county you know, by uh, communications. So the internet, in this day and age, it's astounding, but it's a reality. And then when you look at the, what we're doing is we're asking parents or grandparents or guardians to homeschool. Now, think about the challenge that that, that brings. Uh, there, there are some who just don't have the time because they may be working a couple of jobs. Um, there are many who don't have the ability and the wherewithal to do it. Uh, and, and um, I worry about those kids. So we're doing the best we can, and our teachers are working very hard to try and minimize the, the negative impact here. And, and you can you know, ask the professionals back there about what we're doing, but I'm afraid that when it's all said and done, that, that we will be behind, that many of our kids will be behind, and some much more behind the oth than others. Uh, one other group I worry about is our, K th our kindergarten through third grade kids. Learning how to read is absolutely critical by the third grade. And, and learning how to read and the ability to read gets you through the rest of school. And, and the way we teach reading is through small reading groups. And so those, you, you go into a kindergarten, you'll see that in action. That teacher is very involved in that. And so we've kind of lost that. And so repetition I'm, is key. And so I'm worried about those kids. So at the end of the day, there's going to be a learning gap, in, in my view, that the school system is going to do the best they can uh, to, to close. Yeah, and before we get to some of those ideas, uh, I mean, this is understandably putting many parents in a difficult situation. Oh, absolutely. Well, not only when you, th we've learned some things too. And so we've adjust, first of all, I want to, I want to commend uh, Dr. Nicely and his leadership team for the extraordinary effort they went in planning to even get ready for this. It's so complex in so many levels as to how to deliver the instruction. And we're also, we, we really tried or attempted at first to make the instruction as normal as possible. And then I think we learned early on that it was creating uh, or putting a toll. <laughs> first of all, families are stressed. Uh, this, is, this is new, the kids are home. Uh, there's a lot, boy do they appreciate teachers now, I will tell you that. But there's a lot of stress in, 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 the, in the work, in the family unit, and we noticed that, and so we kind of backed off on uh, assigning grades and homework and due dates and things like that. Um, and so we did that for this, this two-week period. 
Now in the next nine weeks, uh, we're going to try and, and get back to somewhat normal, but teach only, uh, and they can get into the details, uh, what's absolutely necessary to help them advance to the next grade. And so we'll, we'll, we'll do the best we can do there. But here's the, the, the net result of that. My view, and I, and I talked to Dr. Nicely and he agrees, uh, when it's all said and done, we will be doing assessments to see where these kids are, and I have a f and 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 we do this normally anyway. And what we do is um, up we have summer school for high school students uh, who who need it to pass. That that costs money to do that. The parents pay for that. That's not what I'm talking about. What we do do is students that need help, we provide remediation uh, during the summer at no cost. And it's a, let's say it's a relatively small group as a percentage to the number of kids that we have in the system. That number may grow exponentially based on what we, we learn in the assessments. And that may mean a much larger group of kids who need to be fed, who need to be taught, who need to be transported, which you've never done before. And so there's a financial implication to that. Our budget year ends uh, July, uh, uh, July 1st, or the new budget begins. And if you look at what might be happening, the state the sales tax is a big f source of funding at the state level and the local level. We know that this, this shutdown has impacted that. So the budget that we passed a couple of days ago will probably not even look close to the budget that we're going to actually get. So what we're trying to do is, is, is to be able to start to communicate. There may be a funding issue here that the state has to recognize and the county just so our kids can get, get caught up should we need to have a large number of kids in these remedi remediation classes. So that's, that's what we're trying to get uh, people to start thinking about. It's our job to plan ahead, not just react. And I think this system has done a great job. Yeah. Well, that's part of trying to get a gauge of how much stress there might be in, in the family unit. And so what, you know, teachers, when they call, um, they're, they're just asking people, how are you doing? Do you need some help? Uh, and actually, we're we're getting some feedback for that and where people need a little extra help, we're actually doing it. I'm going to give you an example of what this school system is like. When we started delivering food, we had a, a person uh, give us a call in a rural area who said they had no food in the house and that it, they, they didn't even have enough gas to drive to their driveway to come by and pick up the food that we wanted to deliver. We had one of our, our school uh, management folks personally deliver food to that house. And that's happening all over the county. If you know, we, this, this is a time to, to, to help and we're all a community and I think we've really stepped up to do that. Right, well of course right now the governor just closed us down for the rest of the year. So we've been working with our teachers to really the direction for the first two weeks we weren't sure if we're gonna make it back or not. So we were concentrating on just reviewing material that had already been taught at that point in time, giving kids an opportunity to kind of remediate, recycle those types of things. But now that we know we're going to be closed for the rest of the year, uh, the VDOE asked us to all kind of figure out what the essential concepts are that haven't been covered yet. Um, so what we've got is we've got teams of teachers and our instructional supervisors have been working to figure out what are the essential concepts in each content that haven't been covered as of yet. Um, once we've identified those, we're just trying to boil it down to the things that kids will need to move forward either in a, sub a subsequent course or the next grade level. And then what we're going to do is create some performance tasks that kids can demonstrate at least a minimum level of competence in so that teachers can then tailor any instruction they might need for students to go ahead and work on those tasks and to demonstrate that, yeah, I kind of get it, so that moving forward, hopefully kids who have that opportunity will be better prepared next year. Now, of course, we've already talked about the fact that there are going to be some kids who function better in a virtual environment. There are going to be some kids who don't have access at all uh, to the internet or uh, online capabilities. So we're going to hopefully be able to offer some summer opportunities for those students to catch them back up. But even then, we know there are going to be gaps. So starting in the fall, most of our fall classes are going to look very different, at least for the first nine weeks, just in terms of having to do some assessment there at the beginning of the first nine weeks to figure out where kids are and then tailor instruction to get them caught up to where they need to be. In some ways, this curriculum is really making the best out of a bad situation. We know that kids are not going to be able to get the same kind of learning. 
Correct. Same amount of material. Correct. And really, it allows our teachers to, to be creative in how the students show what they do know. Um, I know sometimes with multiple choice testing and standardized testing, a lot of times you focus on those things. And really, we've been able to uncouple those two. And now students can, in creative ways at home, show us what they do know, either by creating a video or a poster. Or quite honestly, we've encouraged our staff to give kids the opportunity to choose how they demonstrate. They kind of have gotten whatever that concept is we're working on fourth nine weeks. Yeah, OK. And one of the way, one of the things we had to adjust, because of course the governor has closed schools, so we're not grading material at this point in time. So what we're going to do is students' grades will be based on the first three nine quarters averaged equally. So there won't be any grades that fourth nine weeks. We are going to give students some credit for any of the tasks that they're able to complete during the fourth nine weeks, but we'll just add a little bit of that grade back into the third nine weeks to give students an opportunity to raise that a little bit. And we are letting students go back, and if there are missing assignments from the third nine weeks that they didn't get because we had just finished that quarter up, we're allowing them to go back and repeat or redo the, not redo, but make up the assignments that they hadn't completed. I think some of the challenges, one of the first one is uh, making sure that they have a laptop. Uh, that they're able to um, access the online material. Um, not every one of our students have laptops or some of them don't have internet, internet access, so it makes it kind of challenging for them to be able to access the material. So what we've done to help um, to supplement that or to replace that is we've developed written packets um, that we've organized and put together and that we've delivered to the families um, so that they will have them to use in place of those other um, assignments and activities. And a lot of these younger students, you know, like we've already talked about today, are, are working on reading. And that, that can be pretty difficult, I would imagine, to teach virtually when you're not able to be in person. It, it can be a challenge. What I think our teachers have done a really nice job uh, is making sure that they're providing students with materials that are at their appropriate level. Um, because we do know when providing reading instruction, we want them to be able to access that material at their level so that they can learn. And so with that, I know for some of our parents, it's, it's a different kind of uh, format and, and kind of um, experience for them teaching this reading. Uh, but with that, we try to give them printed material that they can encounter uh, either uh, online or uh, through printed material as well. Is there a way to get some material to parents to better help their own kids? I know that there's only so many hours in a day for teachers right. to be putting this stuff online, but is that any thought part, part of the thought process for some of the younger kids? Um, some of the things that we've done is we've had um, schools that have sent out um, types of schedules uh, that parents can follow during the day um, for providing instruction to their children. Um, the other thing is, is that our teachers are accessible uh, throughout the day for any parent that wants to contact them via uh, email or uh, through phone, uh, and they are more than willing to answer any kind of questions or challenges that they're having with instruction during the day. Yeah, those are the printed materials, and what we do is uh, we've identified every student that does not have either internet access or online um, or a, a laptop access, or their parents have made a request for printed material. And what we do is we uh, have put together and organized all the instructional materials that they will need uh, for that period of time for instruction. And then we load those on the bus when they do the lunch deliveries and we deliver them to the families then. Yeah. Yes, they get choice when they're, they're working with this information. That's the biggest thing about the elementary that I would stress is that we recognize with our youngsters that they may not necessarily be with their parents during the day. They may be in a childcare setting. They may be with grandparents. It may be in neighbor and so what we want to do is give them choice and so what the assignments that we've given them we don't just give them one assignment that they can choose from we give them a different like a menu type of choice so that they can work with their child at the level they feel comfortable um, but again I really stress that we, we want our teachers to be available to our parents to if they have questions about instruction that they're more than willing to assist and support them.